Hello and welcome to week three of Inferno Friday. This is Archon. And Dreadnought. It is currently 10.13 p.m. on Thursday night, two days after the release of Diablo 3. And we just recently hit level 60 about two or three hours ago. And so we just wanted to share some gameplay with you as we kind of talk about uh, different things we've learned uh, while grinding up to level 60. And one of those things we learned is that there's no rush to get through hell mode. And even though normal and nightmare are, are mostly a hack slash and running through everything, killing everything fast and not focusing on gear as much as leveling, a hell mode is going to be different. Uh, in the first act of hell mode we realized that it was a little bit more difficult than we were planning on it being. And so a, a mindset change will help you out a lot when you're, when you're starting hell mode that you're going to have to use a couple more survivability skills. Uh, you're going to have to change your passives up a little bit, and you're going to uh, just want to work on grinding some of that hell gear out really quickly in the first act of hell. Yeah, back in normal mode and a bit in nightmare, I was able to just focus on doing as much damage as possible, as possible, and that was definitely the fastest way to level back then. Uh, but as the difficulty has gotten harder and harder, I've noticed that I've had to put on more defensive skills and sacrifice a little bit of damage for utility. And now you can see that Blizzard and Magic Missile is really where my damage is coming from, coming from, even though both of those are kind of low DPS skills. But it's really worth the survivability I get from the, always having either Mirror Image or Diamond Skin up uh, to keep guys off of me and stay alive. Hopefully and I'll stay alive here. You'll notice that it's not easy to do that, and so a lot of the times the, the DPS is just going to have to keep moving and running. Um, and as the melee, you can't just stay on whatever forces you were attacking at the time because your your damage is also your lifeline, and so you have to move to where your your DPS is and throw some stuns and some uh, seismic knockback to keep her safe. And uh, and that's the the strat that we've adopted starting in the hell mode just to up our survivability by a huge factor. Yeah, just having Mirror Image and uh, Diamond Skin has helped a ton. Mirror Image turned out to be a lot more useful than I thought it would, especially with this duplicate rune. It makes five copies of me as opposed to two uh, that the unruned would make. And then Crystal Skin with, or sorry, Diamond Skin with the Crystal Shell rune doubles the amount that it absorbs. And so that makes it just really hard for guys to kill me, even though I'm still super squishy and we'll usually die in about two to three hits. And uh, if you're thinking, oh, diamond skin and mirror image, that's, just, that's too much defense, then uh, you might want to take another look at your build because you really only need a couple damage uh, dealers uh, just and just one damage dealer that has no cooldown so that you're, you can always deal damage when you need to, but those defensive abilities and those tactical abilities, they usually have cooldowns. And so if you only have one or two and you're on cooldown, then you're, you're probably dead. So it's not a big deal if you only have two damage abilities. You can still do almost the same amount of damage with only two abilities as you can with six because you're only using one at a time. So you might as well have some of those defensive abilities that require cooldowns so that you always have one that you can use. It's true. It looks like we have a blue pack here which is really uh, the real gameplay in the harder difficulties. Uh, most of these blue packs and yellows tend to be harder than the bosses are, uh, but it's really determined on these three random skills that they have. It's similar to Diablo 2, uh, the elites and champions will get three random buffs, and they're determined from a set of, I think, about a dozen. These guys have Jailer, Extra Health, and Frozen. And so you can see Let's see, wait, we'll wait for an example of it so I can point it out. The jail is that right there, that red orb that comes up around me. And uh, conveniently enough, you can actually get out of that with mirror image or teleport. So having both of those uh, really makes Jailer not that bad. And then frozen are these little orbs that you see come up. They'll probably come up again soon. And if you get too close to those when they explode, then right there's one of them. Then they'll freeze you in place, and that can be death pretty quick, just because uh, they get some time to beat on you, and you can't take many hits from these guys. Uh, luckily, I don't think they saw me there. I'm gonna get frozen again. Oh, and that one killed me, unfortunately. And this is a really difficult 
uh, ability set for the the range to deal with because of the the jailer. Then they're using the jailer so often that that even if you had a teleport, it, they're using it more often than teleport comes off a of cooldown. So sometimes you're just you're gonna have to eat damage. It's true. Um, one nice thing about these blue packs at level 60. Wow, it's getting chained frozen here. Um, this is this is a really hard ability set to deal with because they just they limit so much mo uh, mobility with the the ice and the jailer. And when jailer's up, you you have to take advantage of all the time you have to do damage. But with these ice traps up, we have to be moving every time that we're out of jailer. So some of these ability sets are just really difficult and interesting to deal with and. Um, it'll it'll make you want to change your build during the fight because you're thinking, oh, if only I had this ability, I would have survived. But um, it's better to try and find one ability set that's going to be decent against everything, so that you can keep your Nephilim and Valor bonus. Yeah, at level 60. Anytime you kill one of these groups or a group of the yellow mobs, then you'll get a a buff that lasts for 50, for 30 minutes rather, and it increases your gold and magic find by. 15% and it stacks up to five times so you have a maximum of 75% increase to gold and magic find but it goes away if you ever change your build so it really incentivizes finding one build that works for all situations which is not easy to do but I I have been using this one for a while and I really like it so as you can see we now have one stack of Nephilim Val Valor. And there's two other things that can get rid of your buff other than changing your skills. Uh, also, if you don't kill another elite in 30 minutes, it'll wear off. Or if you leave a game, it'll stop. So you can kind of tell that they're encouraging you to continue to play in the same game and continue to progress. If you're not killing fast enough, then this is going to wear off before you're able to kill another elite pack. There, there's a rumor that the Nephilim Valor disappears once you die. That's not true. You can, you can die like you've seen us do, and, and keep the, the bonus. Yeah, it's it's almost inevitable in these higher difficulties. You're gonna die a couple times, on those harder blue and yellow packs that have just bad combinations for your class. Um, they, like I said, they can be a lot harder than some of the boss fights. Um, maybe we'll get to a boss in this video. It doesn't seem likely though, but you'll see they're really not very hard compared to the blue and yellow guys. Another one of the builds, or one of the abilities that I've really liked is this rune for teleport wormhole that keeps your cooldown from going off until a second after you've cast your initial teleport. Which I assumed it meant you'd be able to do two teleports instead of one. But actually with enough attack speed it looks like you can do four and probably even more. Right now I can do four. Which means I can just yeah, move across the map really quickly, pull guys that I shouldn't be pulling. Uh, but yeah, it can be really convenient um, when you're trying to get somewhere quickly or just trying to get out of the way. Uh, it just seems overpowered compared to the other ruins, in my opinion. And another one that I've really liked is Magic Weapon. It's, uh, it's just a buff that you add to your weapon, but since all damage is based on weapon damage, even for wizards, uh, it buffs all of your attacks. So the one I have ruined currently gives 15% additional damage to all attacks. And that's just a buff. It lasts five minutes. As long as I remember to cast it, then it's just 15% increased damage all the time, which is awesome. Uh, it's a great use of one skill because it's not something that you have to use to take advantage of. You're always going to have it. So right now we're lighting these signal fires. Once we have them all lit, then we're going to raise some catapults and murder these guys. Act 3 is a great act for AoE. As you can see right now I'm using Blizzard for my AoE. I could use something that does more damage like Disintegrate, uh, but the advantage of Blizzard is that I can cast it and then run, and on held difficulty I pretty much have to be running all the time. Looks like we got a yellow, but I have been accidentally picking up whites and grays from misclicking. There we go. Um, one of the things I focus on for survivability, apart from my stuns, which is actually probably my main survivability, 
uh, is stacking life steal. I use a two-handed weapon instead of a shield, and I just I focus on uh, damage dealt percentage uh, life increase. So that the more damage I do, the more life I get back. Um, this works especially well if you have a lot of vitality. Even though I don't believe that uh, going pure vitality is a very good survivability um, option, just because. A lot of times when you're getting life, you're not being healed to full anyway. Your, your healing potions always heal for less than half of your max life, and the, the health orbs aren't going to heal you max life. So a lot of times having a bunch of vitality is only going to save you from really big one-shots. So it's probably worth it to focus more on physical elemental reduction um, and armor. Uh, to end some dodge and, and other types of damage mitigation instead of just trying to absorb all the damage because it's just too much to damage to absorb. Yeah. yeah, one thing that I was surprised about was the need to have an AoE spell and a single target spell in my build all the time. I kind of thought I'd have a single target build and an AoE build and switch between them during leveling, but I found out very quickly that most pulls require a good AoE and single target. And uh, since having two abilities, two DPS abilities that drain arcane can be a little wasteful, uh, it's nice to have one of your primary abilities as either the AoE and DPS, or AoE or single target rather. And right now you can see I'm using Magic Missile, I'm using the Charge Bolt rune, and it actually does some really good damage with that rune um, to single targets. So it allows me to only have one of my secondary builds or skills rather, and still do some decent single target damage. Here we are, lightning sig signal fire number two, I believe. We have five total. Don't think we'll make it through all of them in this video. I kind of just wanted to give you an idea what level 60 is like, uh, share with you some of the stuff that we've learned on our way to 60, and give you a little bit of gameplay. Uh, we'll be releasing another video next week, and we want to know what you guys want us to talk about. So if you have any questions about leveling to 60, or just some uh, advice, or something that you want to hear more about, please leave it in the comments below, and we're going to try to address all the comments, if possible, in next week's video. One of the questions I know a lot of people have is concerning the, the stats, because there's so many different pieces of gear that have really strange different stat qualities because of the randomized stats uh, and sometimes it's hard to figure out which stats you should really be focusing on um, and and that does get complex and it take a long time to talk about mostly just um, not getting into the habit of only stacking your primary attribute because you need some of those multipliers like your attack speed increase damage increase the main DPS on your weapon is the biggest factor and and your primary is also important but it has diminishing returns so it's true. Yeah, I didn't realize how important weapon damage was, even as a wizard, uh, until probably most of the way through Nightmare, until I started getting some high, we high weapon damage weapons, instead of focusing just on intellect, and my damage just shot to the roof. It's really not uncommon to get a new weapon and have your damage double instantly. But that's about it. We wanted to share with you some, some tips. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, we're going to be sharing another video every week. Hopefully we'll be to Inferno soon. Um, but we've been told that there's a huge jump in difficulty from Hell to Inferno, and Hell's already been pretty challenging. So we'll probably have a few more videos on Hell. Uh, again, we want to share whatever you guys want to hear about, so please let us know. And soon enough, we'll be sharing some Inferno strats so stay tuned, and if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, you can do so by clicking the button at the top of this video, and that way you'll get our videos as soon as they're ready. And it looks like we found another yellow. <laughs> so we're going to sign out, and we'll let you know next week if we, uh, we're able to kill this yellow without wiping 15 times. <laughs> Small chance. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next week.